During this video, you will learn how to complete an internal audit, what information is required and how frequently these should be carried out. So, let's start with what an internal audit is. An internal audit examines the operation of your organization and management systems. This provides top-level management with the information needed to ascertain whether the system is operating effectively or if any changes need to be made. Why do we need to complete these internal audits? Internal audits are an integral part of every management system. They help you to ensure that the organization complies with its own procedures. They help you to review processes, ensuring that the procedures still meet the organization's objectives. The results of audits provide evidence for use in corrective action programs and management reviews. They help to identify opportunities for improvement by reviewing the function of each department. They help to drive continual improvement by identifying better procedures and applying corrective actions following non-conformances. So, how do you document your internal audit findings? As you can see, there are several templates available from QMS for use here. These documents include examples of the information we would expect to see as a result of the internal audit as a minimum. If you prefer, you are welcome to create your own internal audit reports and store these on a database, as long as the sections shown on the templates supplied have been included. What should you do once you have noted a process change? For each identified procedural discrepancy, you should raise a non-conformance to determine the reason for it. An important thing to remember, during an internal audit, you may well find that a documented procedure is no longer being carried out as stated due to it no longer being effective, which is obviously a good thing. If this is the case, you should still record this as a non-conformance. We cover these in a separate video. Where staff have failed to carry out the correct procedure or actions, you would log this failure as a non-conformance and arrange further training. Where the documented procedure has simply become outdated, you will need to rewrite the manual to reflect the new procedure. To do this, you will need to locate and amend the documented procedure within the Documented Management System Manual. You must also update the Revision and Amendment Register. This can be found at the front of the QMS Manual. What else must you check during your internal audit? Within the manual, there is a section titled Control of Records. Here, you will see a list of all the records the QMS auditor will inspect at the external audit. From this list, you need to establish whether these records are still current and whether the records are being updated and maintained, amending the manual accordingly. So, how frequently should an internal audit take place? This is down to you. Internal audits can either be carried out routinely, as shown on the internal audit matrix supplied by QMS, or more sporadically, to fit around other commitments. By following the internal audit matrix, you will have a more manageable workload throughout the year, ahead of the external audit, because it also incorporates your management reviews, meaning that all of your key responsibilities are completed in a timely manner, ahead of the external audit, increasing your chances of achieving a positive audit result. We hope you find this video useful. If you require further information, please email inquiries at qmsuk.com or call 0333 344 3646.